of everyone in Victoria. Thank you. It's been a delight to have you with us and always a delight to have you all come to here on The Chase Australia. See you next time. Tonight, a family's plea to cross WA's border after a crash in Perth's east leaves a mother of four critically injured. A Perth teenager wakes from his crash nightmare, his miracle recovery and his family's message for the neighbours who performed this citizen's arrest. More confusion over schools as some principals defy the Education Minister's order to return to class. Doctors' new demand as empty coronavirus beds exposed an elective surgery crisis. Supermarkets lift restrictions, ready for a surge in online demand. How and what you can now buy. And pressure on the AFL to relaunch footy here in the West after a rival code sealed a restart date. Live from our Perth headquarters, this is 7 News with Rick Arden and Susanna Carr. Good evening and welcome to 7 News. A Perth mother is tonight fighting for life and her family is fighting to cross WA's border to see her after a crash in Midvale. The victim's husband was allegedly behind the wheel. Tonight, police are still trying to determine if this was an awful accident or something more sinister. The mother of four young boys was just metres from her home. The force of the impact so strong it shattered the car's windscreen. 31-year-old Kay Sheehan is now in the fight for her life. Her husband of just four months was allegedly behind the wheel. It happened on Wellington Street in Midvale just before seven last night. Neighbours saw the horror unfold. I know who she is, so I was quite shocked to see who it was. Yeah, it wasn't something you want to see every day. It's belief Kay was walking along here when things went terribly wrong. Neighbours say they heard a car screech followed by a loud bang. That's when they rushed out to find the young mum on the other side of the road. Police returned to the scene today, questioning witnesses, marking skid marks near the crash site. I hope she pulls through because those poor little boys, you know. Tonight, while police continue to question a man believed to be Kay's husband, she remains in Royal Perth Hospital on life support. Her family in New Zealand are desperately trying to get clearance to fly here to join her brother at her bedside. They'll have to apply for an exemption from WA's border crackdown on compassionate grounds. Amber Johnston, 7 News. Let's go to El Giorgio now. And El, any word whether her family will be able to make it to Perth? Sue, good evening. This is an incredible, incredibly complicated situation. We have put the question to WA police and to WA border force as well, but ultimately it will be up to the police as to whether or not her family will be able to travel into WA from New Zealand and if they arrive here, whether or not they'll have to be quarantined for two weeks. But we do have some good news from Royal Perth Hospital tonight regarding another crash that landed a Perth teenager in an induced coma. He has made a miraculous recovery overnight. His parents today thanking the Good Samaritans who chased the driver down uh, who allegedly hit him. While Caversham residents performed this takedown on an alleged runaway driver, 19-year-old Adam Mercer was buried under a pile of rubble in his bedroom fighting for his life. Yesterday put in an induced coma, machines keeping him alive while doctors assessed the damage. Today he woke up less than 24 hours after the smash. He's made a miraculous recovery, he's bounced back well, so we're, we're very proud and very happy. The man charged over the crash is 36-year-old Grant Damien Holman. Like his alleged victim, he was taken to Royal Perth Hospital for treatment, where he was slapped with a driving charge by police at his bedside and granted bail by a magistrate this morning. He's, you know, ruined our lives and, and um, you know, he's obviously, he's inconvenienced a lot of people for, for one you know, silly mistake. Doctors say Adam is very lucky to have escaped with his life. Somehow his brain and other major organs were spared when he was catapulted across his bedroom when the car came smashing through as he slept. We feared the worst when they took him away. He, he was in a pretty bad way. Adam's family says he's had plastic surgery on his face and some stitches, but they know this was the best possible outcome. El Giorgio, 7 News. 
Breaking news tonight. Four police officers have been killed in a horror smash on a Melbourne freeway. Witnesses say a semi-trailer ploughed into two police cars that had stopped in the breakdown lane. They were parked there after pulling over the driver of a black Porsche for speeding. Traffic on the eastern freeway is banked up for more than a kilometre. The state education minister is picking a fight with Catholic and some Anglican schools, refusing to resume normal classes next week. She's urging them to reconsider and give parents the option. Jordan Cutts explains. Homeschooling is a hard slog. Just read that first line there. But as a former intensive care nurse, Rachel Roberts feels their Palmyra home is the safest place for her two boys. Once I took them home, I felt more relaxed knowing that I could contain what I could contain in this house and keep them safe and then keep my extended family safe. School restarts next week, but Archie and Otis won't be going, at least for four weeks. To the annoyance of the state's education minister, some private schools like Otis's and Archie's will not be doing what all state schools have been directed to do. Telling Seven News, it is disappointing that Catholic and Anglican schools have decided to go in another direction. This is the plan for the state's 163 Catholic schools. Term 2 starts Wednesday the 29th of April. Year 11s and 12s are being encouraged to come to school. They'll be taught face to face. But it's not compulsory. They can still learn from home. Younger students won't be turned away, but it won't be normal classroom teaching like public schools. They'll be learning from a screen or given work packs. It's going to stay like this for the first four weeks of Term 2. At Catholic schools, parents will not be allowed to get out of their cars when dropping off or picking up their children. If they walk their child to school, there'll be designated drop-off points so that they don't enter the school grounds. Younger children will be escorted to their classrooms by staff. For the Anglican School Commission's 12 schools, students will continue to learn via the remote online learning program for the first three weeks of Term 2. Year 11 and 12 students are being encouraged to come back. For younger children, parents can choose whether they learn on campus or at home. I just hope that they reconsider. And the education advice is face-to-face -face teaching uh, is the best way of teaching a child. Otis and Archie are no experts, but they think their mums got it right. I think it's a good decision because at school we touch a lot of things and we don't touch much things at home. Jordan Katz, 7 News. Another day of no new coronavirus cases has exposed a new crisis. Doctors have issued an ultimatum demanding all potential patients be tested before hospital beds that were freed up for a pandemic can be used to ease an elective surgery backlog. Jeff Parry explains. They wear a range of different uniforms, but they're working as one to beat COVID-19. At the State Health Incident Coordination Centre, they're quietly celebrating another day of no new cases. The number of active cases in WA shrank overnight to 88. 25 people are in hospital, five are in ICU, leaving hospital beds ready for a pandemic idle. We'll see what, see what tomorrow brings. It's allowed the state government to designate next Tuesday to resuscitate elective surgery. At the start of the COVID-19 outbreak in February, there were 25,500 people on the waiting list. Since restrictions were introduced, 3,000 procedures were deferred. Of them, only 25% of patients should expect a call in the next three weeks. This will be treading water at best. And so obviously we'd love to be able to continue to increase the volume of elective surgery. The AMA approves of the staggered return to surgery, but wants every patient tested for coronavirus before they're operated on. It's bad to have a procedure at a time when you unknowingly are developing uh, the COVID uh, syndrome. During the coronavirus crisis, our police have had to deal with a lot of varied issues, but yesterday... They could barely believe what they were seeing. It's yet to be explained why this oversized teddy bear breached isolation to hitch a ride around Perth. He was stuffed when police caught up with him and dispensed their own test for corona. His breath test, barely readable. Jeff Parry, 7 News. The cruise ship doctor at the centre of the Ruby Princess disaster has given bombshell evidence at a special inquiry into the deadly coronavirus outbreak. She said she knew there were COVID-19 type symptoms on board, but forgot to update authorities. It's a question being asked around Australia. Whether you thought it was appropriate for all of the passengers 
in the circumstances we've just discussed to disembark on that. The answer from Ruby Princess head doctor Ilse van Vortstorff will be heard around the world. I was surprised that we were allowed to do that without waiting for the results to come through. One of a series of stunning revelations today. We said we have two patients that need to be medically disembarked. I think the words they used were, we were worried that this is a bogus call. Does the commissioner take it from that you'd forgotten to send the final updated log? I have the final updated log in a draft box, and it's just the day just became, that not, did not have enough hours. As the New South Wales government's special commission of inquiry into the disaster kicked off. You were not asked mm -hmm. any questions about COVID-19 in the form. I... Uh, that is signs on board. Let me put it... Let me put it this way. If somebody asked me, could this be consistent with COVID-19, I would have said yes. Thank you. It was important for me to let them know that it cannot be excluded. As the commission, helmed by veteran silk Brett Walker, turned fiery at times. Please He's just answer my question, symptoms. doctor. There were no passengers showing COVID-19 symptoms. Would that have been correct or not? If you can, just give me a one-word answer. No. Today, some fellow crew members finally boarded flights home to the US. Oh, we're grateful that we're alive, we're healthy, we're well, and we're going to be all right. Despite there still being an open investigation and the special commission of inquiry, New South Wales Police Commissioner Mick Fuller has confirmed that the captain will sail the ship out of Port Kembla tomorrow, leaving behind an ocean of questions. Peter Fegan, 7 News. Meyer has announced its stores will stay shut until May 11th at least. The move online hasn't hurt all retailers. Overall sales were up 8.2% in March. Supermarket sales jumped 22%, with toilet paper, tissues, flour, rice and pasta the top of the hoarding list. Coles and Woolworths say shelves are now restocked, and that means home delivery services can be boosted. In our changing world, Woolies knows customers would prefer to avoid the aisles altogether. So it's hired a dedicated team to do the shopping for you. We've added thousands of new personal shoppers who personally pick a customer's order. At the height of the pandemic, home delivery was reserved for the vulnerable. But now Woolworths has reinstated online orders for everyone. And it is expecting unprecedented demand, hiring 5,000 staff to pack orders from within existing stores. And at this new pop-up warehouse in Melbourne's southeast. The supermarket giants also taken on thousands of drivers from Sherpa and Drive Yellow. What was delivery? So we've got tens of thousands of new windows available so we can serve everyone with home delivery now. As panic buying eases, Aldi has lifted purchase limits on long life milk, microwave rice, canned foods and sugar. But toilet paper and paper towel are still being rationed. Coles has also relaxed its COVID-19 restrictions. Its click and collect and home delivery service are now available to everyone. But items will only be dropped at your front door, not at the kitchen table. We're expecting a very large uptake. It's probably the second most asked question after when will toilet paper come back. Jodie Lee, 7 News. WA's stalled tourism industry is bracing for the fallout as Virgin Australia hunts for a new owner. The airline's collapse is another blow for the industry, currently described as non-existent by the minister charged with championing it. 11 billion reasons why WA needs Virgin Australia to keep flying. That's how many tourist dollars were spent here last year. 2020, a different story. It's, it's like uh, running a supermarket with nothing on the shelves. 2019 was a record year for tourism, fuelled by government brokered airfares cheaper to attract visitors to Perth and the regions. We hope to recover one day. Competition in the air has been critical to keep fares down, but Virgin's critical condition has travel agents worried. Invariably with one airline, then the fares will start increasing. 
Administrators are confident Virgin will survive. Today, Deloitte put up the for sale sign and the marketing began. The key selling points are to airline market, proximity to Asia, strong government support, key assets like its 130 aircraft and 10 million Velocity frequent flyer members. Between July and December last year, Virgin earned more money from Velocity than it did from flying. That's staggering. Transport heavyweight Lindsay Fox has reportedly shown interest in investing. Super funds might too if it suits members. Queensland and New South Wales have offered financial incentives for the airline to be based in their states, but don't expect Virgin headquarters to come to Perth. The government has ruled out any financial carrot to lure the airline west. They're not based here. Uh, the state government won't be contributing to any uh, package. Whoever the new owners are, experts say WA services shouldn't suffer. That would be a major step backwards. Cassidy Moscone, Seven News. Premier Mark McGowan is throwing his support behind plans to make WA the quarantine hub for a new look AFL to resume within weeks. All 18 clubs might be hosted in one city, but there's no agreement yet which city that would be, sparking a bidding war between the states. The pressure is on the AFL to act now after its biggest competitor locked in a restart date. The National Rugby League will be relaunched on the 28th of May and in just 12 days the players will return to training. Playing it safe, the AFL is only just talking about playing in quarantine hubs. I understand there has been some communication, not directly with me, but with other people within government. The AFL's most likely scenario, hubs in Perth, Adelaide and Melbourne with WA to host four teams for up to six weeks. West Coast and Fremantle to play matches at Optus Stadium against either both Sydney clubs or both Queensland clubs. The Premier likes the idea, as long as all the teams go into isolation for two weeks first. If we can have teams based here, if we can have a competition uh, based here, uh, then that would be, I think, great for morale across the community. There will still be no crowds at Optus, but the WA government is eager to counter a Victorian proposal to host all 18 teams in Melbourne in a mega hub. We are the home of the AFL. We would be delighted uh, in Melbourne uh, to have the competition start again. And despite being Australia's COVID-19 capital, Sydney even thinks their Olympic precinct would be perfect. When you think about it, purpose built for um, the Olympics not too long ago. They're going to plan to do it everywhere so that when the time comes, they can do it somewhere. Adrian Barrage, 7 News. In breaking news tonight, troubled former Eagle star Ben Cousins is back behind bars. The AFL Brownlow medalist is reportedly facing a drug possession charge after police investigating reports of reckless driving searched his car. Police won't name the 41-year-old who's been charged. It's almost 12 months since Ben Cousins walked out of prison for the second time. He recently told Seven he was determined to spend more time with his two children. Households across the country are about to be hit by another big COVID-19 shock. Power bills are coming in and for most they've risen dramatically simply because of how much more time we're spending at home. It's an unprecedented time in history. Our streets are empty. WA is at home. But another storm is brewing. Pandemic power bills. We have increased consumption over this period, so there will be increased bills that customers will be receiving. While everyone is at home together and safe, we're chewing up electricity. Computers, printers, heating, cooling. Never have we used so much. We, we think we're at the front end of a big storm, and that's a concern for us. On average, it can cost around $2.78 a day to run a home. That's without people living and working in it for six to ten hours. Support groups believe we'll see an even bigger second wave of pain later in the year when these bills that households can't afford have really piled up. Prepare now. Be ready now. Know that that bill's going to come. And if everyone's at home, it's likely to be bigger than the last one. So prepare for that. 
The Water Corporation has been accused of price gouging in this pandemic, charging people struggling to pay their bills more than 10% interest. But the water supplier says that will only happen if you don't get in touch and at least discuss possible payment options. Synergy also says reaching out is imperative. We've uh, agreed to extend terms um, and we'll base that based on their circumstances. And that you can switch off to save. Brittany Hoskins, 7 News. Samantha Jolly joins us now with an early look at weather. Hey, we had some showers this afternoon, we Sam. We did. The drizzle rolled through about 3pm, so we had 0.2 of a millimetre. We've had that so far. And we had a cloudy and a humid day, a top of 24.6 degrees. That's very similar to yesterday. And that overnight low was 13.8. Now, the winds were from the northeast this morning, then westerly for much of the day. Mandra had some earlier showers from around 11am, and they've had one millimetre all up, 0.2 for Fremantle. And it was cool and cloudy right across the metro area. Area, 21 degrees in Kalamunda. 25 was the top in Jandicott and it was 22 along our south coast. We can thank a weak cold front for today's conditions. I'll tell you when it's likely to clear up right after sport. Thanks, Sam. Tourists not welcome. Donald Trump's pledge to reopen the US but close the borders. Next. Plus explosions in Perth's north. See the trail of damage after an arson attack in Westminster. China takes aim at Peter Dutton, what the immigration minister said that sparked their fury. Coming up in sport at 6.45, Eagle Liam Duggan on why his isolation training hasn't gone unnoticed. Yeah, he's drawn some, some cameras. Um, I can say that you see the phones walking past as they show by. And later, hear from the WA father behind a heart-stopping ocean rescue. has ever been like this. Diane, it's time to talk. Each family member, all prime suspects. Kenny, did you murder your father? Bang, bang, bang. You will witness every bizarre development. <laughs> the 7 News investigation, Family of Suspects, Sunday on 7. Get $100 off this LG fridge, 20% off this Westinghouse dishwasher, this Linsar 65-inch TV, only $5.95, and 34% off this Nutribullet. Loads more online and in our catalogue, only at The Good Guys. Here's something extra from Hyundai. Right now, across Hyundai's petrol and diesel SUV range, get a generous cash back on the SUV style, performance, and safety features you need. Because right now, we know a little goes a long way. At HBF, we've been there for our members for nearly 80 years. And with things looking a little different right now. We're all adapting to our new normal. We understand that right now, access to certain health services just isn't the same. At HBF, we've made some changes. We now offer temporary benefits for eligible members to access a range of certain extra services via phone or video. At HBF, we're here to help you stay well. Your lifestyle, our design. Go Walk in Skechers Go Walk 5, our most advanced walking shoe yet. We deliver technology in every step, featuring impact-reducing Skechers Comfort pillars and air-cooled Goga Mat insoles. We made the best better. Skechers Go Walk 5. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready, no.
Tasty, affordable and delicious. What's for dinner in the next break with Coles? The arson squad is investigating a blaze at a home in Westminster. Suspicious vehicle fires have left the property with $200,000 damage. Several cars, a motorbike and a front room were destroyed. I thought it was a bomb. <laughs> that was my first you know, thought. It was someone's bombing the house across the road. The blaze took hold just before 5am. Police have asked residents to check their security cameras. China has dubbed a senior Australian minister an American parrot for daring to demand an investigation into its handling of the coronavirus outbreak. Our Prime Minister has rallied Donald Trump and other world leaders to push for an independent probe to prevent another pandemic. Chinese President Xi Jinping visiting a primary school and a tea plantation, but won't concede his country misled the world over the coronavirus, not for all the tea in China. Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton has called on China to show greater transparency, the Chinese embassy firing back, accusing him of staging political attacks on China and being keen to parrot what those Americans have asserted. I think they're unwanted and unjustified comments. The industry minister repeating Mr Dutton's plea. I would call on all nations to be very transparent and very open. How to ensure China does that is something Scott Morrison discussed in a series of phone conversations with world leaders overnight. One suggestion, an inquiry to go into China with the powers of a weapons inspector. With US President Donald Trump discussing the need to design a better global response to future pandemics, in another call, France's Emmanuel Macron revealing Hill Press for a full inquiry into the origins of the outbreak at next month's World Health Organization Assembly, but an inquiry independent of that body and the UN. German Chancellor Angela Merkel telling Mr Morrison she backed the French proposal, but the big unanswered question what body should investigate. If not the WHO, then who? Mark Riley, Seven News. Donald Trump is now pledging to reopen his country while closing its borders, banning permanent immigration to the US for two months. The president claims the restriction will protect American jobs, but his opponents see it as just another diversion. As the president strides to get life back to normal for his citizens. I see light at the end of the tunnel. I actually see a lot of light at the end of the tunnel. A red light for green cards. I will be issuing a temporary suspension of immigration into the United States. Donald Trump set to sign an executive order suspending immigration for 60 days, halting anyone seeking permanent residency. It would be wrong and unjust for Americans laid off by the virus to be replaced with new immigrant labour flown in from abroad. But with America's borders effectively shut because of COVID-19, his critics say this is a political manoeuvre aimed at energising his base. I think it's another diversion. Uh, the agencies don't even know what it is. No one knows what it is. The White House may be confident the country's past the peak of this pandemic, but the number of economic victims is still growing. Congress passing a $500 billion rescue package today to help small businesses trying desperately to stay afloat. I don't want more people dying, but again, we all have to survive. It's as bad as what you hear the Great Depression was. Or has the potential to be anyway. State governments are feeling the pinch too. New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo meeting with the President today, insisting federal funding for nationwide testing is key to unlocking the economy. The state governments uh, are broke, to use a very blunt term. In New York, Ashley Mullaney, 7 News. Donald Trump has praised North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un, whose health remains a mystery tonight. U.S. intelligence reports suggest he's gravely ill following heart surgery. We don't know. We don't know. I've had a very good relationship with him. I wouldn't... Uh, you know, I can only say this, I wish him well. President Trump has met the 36-year-old dictator three times and says the pair have developed strong ties.
He's the 99-year-old World War II veteran who's become known around the world for his fundraising efforts for Britain's health service. Now Captain Tom Moore has opened a new field hospital in Yorkshire via video link, thanking frontline workers for their efforts during the coronavirus crisis. The humble hero raised more than $50 million walking laps around his garden. Why a Perth woman jailed for helping her mother's killer has been set free. Plus seconds to spare. Hear from the brave father who saved two girls from a rip in our southwest. A gift for the Queen's birthday. Why human trials of a COVID vaccine are imminent. Plato, could hypnosis help prevent the spread of coronavirus? And secrets and surprises from our famous Graham Farmer Tunnel. Why Perth has something to celebrate. That's next. Jenna Clark from the West Australian here. In the spirit of staying connected, we're showcasing businesses we know and love in the Open for Business section on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. Pick up your copy this week and remember to support West Aussies who are still open for business. Are you ready for takeoff? Yes, baby. When you're smiling. Now that's more like it. When you're smiling. I think I'm going to throw up my lasagna. The whole world smiles with you. How amazing was that? Be Welcome to 2020. And keep on laughing. And keep this is what the world has been waiting for. You're smiling. The Get ready. We're celebrating the extraordinary. That is how you do it. Brand new Britain's Got Talent. Tonight, 7.30 on 7. Hi guys, I'm Darren Purchase. Welcome back to my kitchen. Now all this spending time at home has its advantages and disadvantages. I know for one, my hair is getting really long. But I'm also cooking things I wouldn't normally cook. And I'm loving the opportunity of cooking for my family and spending more time with them. So what's for dinner? Well, tonight I'm gonna to show you how to make my chicken leek and pancetta pies. Really simple to make using fresh Aussie ingredients. So let's get started. I've got all of the ingredients for the pie filling here. Now with the pastry, you could of course buy in your own pastry. There are plenty of awesome brands on the supermarket shelves if you don't have the time. Rub the cold butter cubes using your fingertips into the flour in a mixing bowl before adding the water and using your hands, bringing the dough together. Okay, pastry is done. Pop it in the fridge, give it a chill down and a rest, and I'll start on the pie filling. Cook the pancetta over a medium heat until it's golden brown and crispy. Lightly season the chicken pieces with salt and white pepper. Saute the chicken in two batches. Add the chopped onion, celery, and leeks to the pan. Season with a little salt, the chopped thyme, and grate in the garlic cloves using a microplane. Next, I'm going to deglaze with the white wine. Sprinkle in the flour, add the chicken stock. Add the bacon and chicken plus the juices and simmer for about three minutes before adding the cream, chopped parsley and frozen peas, which I love. Pie filling's ready. Now put it inside our pie tins. Done. Let's make four generous sized pies. Now, before I put the pastry on top, I need to cool these down a little bit, probably for about half an hour in the fridge. While I'm waiting, I'm gonna roll out the pastry we made earlier, make a quick egg wash, and I'm gonna preheat my oven to 180 degrees. My pie mix has been chilled, and also my pastry has cooled down as well, so now it's just time to lid these pies. Very exciting part. I'm gonna brush the top of the pie lid with the egg wash that we made earlier. Now I'll just sprinkle some salt over the top and pop them in the oven. Chicken leek pancetta pies. There's no school like the old school. These are a real treat. For more recipes like this, head to coles.com.au. I can't wait any longer. I'm going to dig in. Have a good night. Two girls swept out to sea off a of Bunbury beach have been saved just in time by a hero dad. Police body cameras were rolling as the heart-stopping ocean rescue unfolded. A desperate race to save two little girls caught in a rip. 
officers sprint, knowing time could be running out. Then a sigh of relief. They're hurt, but safe. Injuries? Yeah, possibly a broken oh, okay, Best friends pulled to safety by Evan Robinson, Jasmine's dad. Pretty horrendous and it's you know, something the father never wants to have to go through or, or, or anyone for that matter. I thought I was going to die. That's a girl. Oh, careful of your arm. Okay. Down to that lady. She'll help you. Witnesses and police frantically tried to warm up the 11 and 12 year old. You right to stand up? Come down here. Let me have a look. Keep that there. Tuck it onto you. Yeah, hold your chest. Just hold it in there where it feels comfortable. With all that's going on in the world at the moment, it's easy to forget just how dangerous the ocean can be. Police say it's extremely lucky Mr Robinson got to the girls before it was too late. Walking away from a school holiday swimming lesson like no other. Emily Baker, 7 News. The British government is said to be divided over when is the right time to lift the lockdown with increasing fears of a second wave of the virus. Human trials of a vaccine are imminent, but for so many across the UK, it's already too late. In Birmingham, Britain's latest coronavirus hotspot... Some of the hundreds of victims here are wheeled into a temporary morgue set up in the car park of a mosque as COVID-19 continues to tear through English communities. I've seen uh, families grieving uh, and I think it's not going to go away quick, uh, especially when you see a young uh, son and a father pass away buried together. The official death toll across Britain is now at more than 17,000, but likely 40% higher, according to statisticians, as British life adapts. At the Tower of London, there was silence, where usually there'd be a gun salute to mark the Queen's birthday. Instead, Her Majesty released rare home videos of more carefree times. And Parliament resumed with just a handful of MPs kept well apart. Order. Order. The House is meeting today in exceptional and unprecedented circumstances. Boris Johnson is taking tentative steps towards a return to work. He remains at his country residence, but will this week speak with the Queen for the first time in nearly a month and has taken a phone call from Donald Trump. The UK government is pinning its hopes on vaccine trials at two universities. Very interested to see whether or not it can prevent cases of coronavirus disease. And so that's, that's why we need to, to get on and start the testing in humans. The tests begin in 24 hours. In London, Hugh Whitfeld, 7 News. A woman who helped her father cover up Perth's body in a suitcase murder has been freed from prison. Annabelle Chen's body was found in the Swan River in 2016. Her daughter Tiffany Wan was found guilty of being an accessory for helping her father clean up evidence. Wan has been released a year early because she was deemed a very low risk of reoffending. It's 20 years today since a pipe dream became reality and the Graham Farmer Freeway Tunnel officially opened. Two decades into what's expected to be a 100-year lifespan, the Poly Pipe is credited with saving the city from gridlock. Joey Catanzaro reports. When tunnel vision became a reality, 20 years ago today, Perth's Poly Pipe officially opened, connecting east and west, bypassing the city centre. The first person to drive through, the tunnel's namesake, footy legend, Graham Polly Farmer. Certainly made a significant impact on Perth traffic. The Graham Farmer Freeway Tunnel took four years and $313 million to build. Its construction, not without controversy. I think the vision at the time was exceptional. It came at the right time. And as I said, we're trying to imagine all that car shifting through the city streets now. About 90,000 vehicles go through the tunnel every day. But since the COVID crisis, that's dropped to about 45,000. Over 20 years, more than 50 million trips have been made through the poly pipe. But none of them by John. Never been through there. Been past it, but never been through. The 78-year-old Girouin Gardner is one of a few yet to go through. The tunnels accumulated a few tales over the decades. An unexpected berth that held up traffic, a food delivery cyclist 
who took a shortcut. Main roads are doing something special to mark the 20th anniversary. Lights at the end of the tunnel. We're told the new lighting display will be similar to the type used on the Matagara Bridge and should be switched on tonight. Surviving the occasional wild ride of its teenage years, the now 20-year-old tunnel is designed to last for another 80 years. Joey Catanzaro, 7 News. Incredible vision has emerged of a pod of dolphins appearing to guide a whale out of the Dawesville Cut. Oh, it's actually getting an escort. Oh, look, it's underneath them. After more than an hour, the whale eventually continued out to the end of the channel, swimming out to sea. Still to come. 20 seconds each time is the hand-washing message. But is the constant cleaning taking its toll? How to keep your skin healthy? And how these puppies have set an Australian record. And in sport in 10 minutes, John Walsfold meets the challenge with grace. I promise you it's going to be fun. Billy Connolly's brand new American adventure. Uncle Sam wants you. All I need is a top hat. An extraordinary journey through a country of extremes. I'm showing a bit of decay myself. <laughs> I love it. All new Billy Connolly's Great American Trail, Thursday on 7. At Harvey Norman, our stores are open with teams practicing social distancing to keep our community safe. Buy now on 60 months interest free and receive a bonus gift card up to the value of $300. Shop for essential tech to keep working, a new appliance or a bigger sofa or better mattress to make staying home more comfortable. Shop in store or online with both click and collect and delivery available. Take advantage of 60 months interest free and receive a bonus gift card until Tuesday only. Cookie people, cream people, crumbs people, clean people, twist people, lick people, dunk people, munch people. It's on the play, people. If you twist, lick, dunk, then you're my people. We are Oreo people. Mechanical services and repairs. Air conditioning, electrical and lighting repairs. AutoSpark will find, fix, regas or service it with the best advice. If your car won't start, call AutoSpark. Every year we celebrate the spirit of the Anzac. One that has seen the best of us through the worst of times. One of resilience and mateship. It's a flame of hope that flickers when things seem most dark. This year, we may not stand shoulder to shoulder, but let us stand together in that spirit at dawn. Because Anzac is in all of us. I'll say for those things. Shame. At Toyota, we're all about your safety. That's why our dealerships and service centres are staying open. Older feeling. Toyota. With your support, Niche Living has been helping create jobs for the WA building community for over 18 years. To help, we're making this unprecedented offer. Niche Living homeowners can now get rent relief of up to 500 bucks per week until you move into your new home. Free stamp duty, plus we'll even cover your first year's mortgage up to 10 grand. That's up to 50k worth of assistance. Get into your own home with little to no savings needed and support WA jobs. Niche Living, safe as houses. Boring, conservative, fabulous. Please responsibly with Sportsbet's new expert tips from Best Bets. Compare the experts' best and value picks for the day and add them straight to your bet slip. <laughs> Now, Fuel Watch, Perth's petrol prices. Brought to you by Fuel Watch and 7 News. The Australian share market has closed just a tenth of a point lower today after a volatile session sparked by another sharp sell-off in equities around the world. With continuing uncertainty in the travel sector, Qantas and Flight Centre dropped around 6% each. 
Gold is trading at 1,685 US dollars an ounce. Iron ore is just under 84 dollars. One Australian dollar is buying 63.34 US cents. Consumer group Choice is calling on the big banks to cut credit card costs. It wants interest rates capped at 10% and debt paused for up to six months for customers hit hard by the coronavirus crisis. Choice also says long-term debt should be waived entirely. A man accused of raping a 12-year-old girl who was pimped out by her father has been found not guilty. Police claimed Mitchell Baldwin responded to the father's advertisement on Craigslist. The girl was subjected to years of abuse by the so-called Evil 8 pedophile ring. But a judge today said he was not convinced beyond reasonable doubt that Baldwin was one of the men who raped her. Our new reliance on hand soap and sanitizer is having an unintended consequence. There's been a surge in painful and debilitating skin conditions, but there are ways to avoid bad reactions. Medicine student Jessica Mitchell is painfully aware of how hard a skin condition can be to handle. The skin just starts to break down faster, so I often get cracking in my knuckles. Um, particularly around my fingers. It's become particularly bad as she's upped her hand-washing routine. During the past few weeks, dermatologists have been inundated with patients complaining about nasty reactions. It strips the natural oil and moisture from the skin, so it results in a secondary hand dermatitis. I've seen a few patients where the skin's actually broken and it's literally bleeding in front of my eyes. Dr Curry says one recent case was so bad he sent the patient straight to emergency. Their skin just um, became floridly irritated and had dermatitis everywhere. Experts say the best way of avoiding a bad reaction is by steering clear of homemade concoctions which can be far more damaging than the real thing. In the wrong concentrations they can be very irritating and literally burn and dissolve your skin. The best remedy? The most important thing to do is to try and rehydrate the hand, so lots of hand moisturiser. And as always, prevention is better than a cure. I almost moisturise after every single time that I sanitise my hands, so that every time I take away that moisture, I'm restoring it straight away. Despite the unfortunate side effects, specialists say hand hygiene is more important now than ever. Case to Law, 7 News. They say the more the merrier and shadow a Neapolitan mastiff has set a new record for having Australia's biggest litter of puppies. Vets in Brisbane performed an emergency caesarean to help the new mum give birth to 21 puppies on Monday. 18 of them survived in the miracle litter. We're being told, as you've seen, to wash our hands and, importantly, not touch our faces to stop the spread of COVID-19. But it's easier said than done. So could hypnosis be the answer? Don't miss that story soon on 7 News. Basil's here now. The battle for the hub sits on, Baz. Rick, so every state has their hand up. We'll speak to a Premiership Eagle and the Dockers coach as the challenge continues. Smooth from Nathan Buckley. We'll show you John Worsfold's response. And could Daniel Ricciardo go back to Red Bull? Don't rule it out. Who ordered brand new Mrs. Brown's Boys? It was me. Tonight. No way. The long-awaited brand new special. I knew those flowers weren't for me. I don't get flowers. If I smell flowers, I look around for a coffin. Get ready for an outrageous evening. Do not speak to me. She's annoyed with me. She says I'm too nosy. She said that. No, no, I read it in her diary. Brand new Mrs. Brown's Boys. Hello. Tonight, 9 o'clock on 7. To the team serving us at the checkouts and stacking the shelves, the butchers, the bakers, the coal service team, the drivers, the farmers, the suppliers, the distribution teams, the store support teams. In fact, every one of our nearly 120,000 team members and thousands of suppliers working so hard to ensure our customers have what they need to provide for their families during these difficult times. To all of you, Coles would like to say thank you. At Terry White Chem Mart, we're more than just open. We're open to helping any way we can. Like offering the safety and convenience of home delivery. Terry White Chem Mart. Now that's real chemistry. We're pregnant! <laughs> <laughs> Did, Did someone say KFC? KFC? I don't care! 
Quit having to hide from your kids. Quit the expense. Quit coughing. Quit running out of breath. Quit always saying you're going to quit. Quit smoking and you quit all the crap that goes with it. You quit, you win. Getting reliable, accurate information has never been more important. Now, for just a dollar a day for eight weeks, you can have the newspaper delivered every day and get full digital access to our website, The West Australian. At Domino's, our first priority is the health and safety of our team members and customers. That's why we are now offering zero contact delivery. So you can get any large pizza from $15 delivered with total peace of mind. Get AHM hospital cover from only $15.75 a week. Yay. It's that easy. So you can get back to doing whatever it is you like to do. Hey. Even that. Find out more and join AHM Direct today. AHM, the simple bit. A lot has changed over the last few months. But globally, Allianz Group's commitment to serving its 100 million customers around the world hasn't. As part of this global network, Allianz Australia has been supporting our customers through uncertainty and change for over 100 years. So you can rely on us to be here for you now and in the future to ensure what matters most. Because our support doesn't stop here. This sports report brought to you by Allianz. West Coast Premiership player Liam Duggan says a hub-style return would benefit the WA clubs. The AFL is looking at all options, but our low COVID-19 numbers have Perth in the box seat to host football upon its return. The Eagles and Dockers typically spend more time in the air than some pilots. I think we might have been due to be in Tassie this weekend, um, which is a big trip. This season alone, they were supposed to combine for more than 110,000 k's of travel. If WA hosts a footy hub, that will all change. There's no doubt that the plane um, gets a bit strenuous at times, but, um, yeah, I, I think the flight home is always the killer, is, is after the game. It's, um, flying over is all good fun, but flying home sometimes gets a bit tough. So if, if we're in hubs and, and that's not happening, then the, the recovery time probably um, does shorten, which which helps us turn around quicker. Not making an excuse or anything like that, because I actually love the, love the travel element, but um, there is a lot of travel compared to, you know, teams that might only travel four or five times a year. Um, so if it, if it does work out this way, where we have to do it in in, in uh, you know in states like Western Australia and um, you know New South Wales, then um, then then we should. The alternative might be a virtual VFL. All 18 clubs locked down in Victoria. As teams plan to restart, some players are stuck interstate with family. We would have 10 players at the moment that are interstate. Um, that we need to get back in, well, as the present rules um, are, it would take, they'd have to be in quarantine for two weeks. So that's 14 days in isolation before they're able to join the footy club, which, um, yeah, creates a few problems, obviously. AFL players are training in isolation, or at best with a couple of teammates. Duggan has joined Nick Natanui. There's been a few few sessions there where, yeah, the big fella's, um, yeah, he's drawn some some cameras, um, I could say. that You see the phones walking past as they stroll by, but, um, yeah, everyone's been, been pretty good with it and, and given us our space, but, um, yeah, he definitely, he's drawn some eyes, that's for sure. Ryan Daniels, 7 News. Even in this coronavirus lockdown, the rivalry between AFL coaches has remained fierce. Here's how Nathan Buckley answered Simon Goodwin's TikTok challenge. Big tick for Nathan and son Ace Buckley. Bucks then challenged John Walsfold. Go, Woosh. Do it. Do it. Do your dance. Oh, how about that? Nice work and bravo, Grace Walsfold. Brett Ratton has been called out by Woosh and I'm sure Adam Simpson and Justin Longmuir are just crossing their fingers that they will be next. Daniel Ricciardo isn't ruling out a return to Red Bull in the future. Ricciardo won seven races while driving for Red Bull before leaving in 2018 to sign with Renault. Something I've learned growing up in, in general, kind of just through life, is never say never, you know, and, and never completely disregard something unless it was <laughs> you know go to prison or something that you really don't want to go back to ricardo is currently in isolation here in wa's on his family farm in jinjin 
And if you're looking for an isolation workout, what about this one from Russian swimmer Yulia Efimova? It might be the toughest. We've seen the three-time Olympic medalist loaded the video on Instagram. It's already had 20 million hits as she alternates between freestyle, breaststroke, butterfly and even backstroke. Now, Rick and Sue, that, <laughs> that is, is core strength. I want to know what's holding you at the end. And Rick, if you want to have a go, we've got a table here. You can get up and have a go. <laughs> I just do that. Well, back to the news and touching our face has been linked to the spread of coronavirus. But for some, stopping the habit is easier said than done. So a hypnotherapist has developed a program free to all Australians to help use the power of the mind to control the body. COVID-19 has brought a lot of uncertainty. No vaccine, no cure. Just mindfulness of space, touching and the importance of not doing it. And as you stop touching your face, it becomes more and more natural and easy to not touch your face. So hypnotherapist Mark Stevens has come up with a way to help people to stop reaching out to their eyes, nose and mouth. Whoosh! By combining self-hypnosis with mindful meditation, we become more aware of what our hands are doing and therefore we can stay more healthy. Training our minds to end the habit. Instead of this, release this. According to university research, we touch our face 23 times an hour, our eyes and nose three times and our mouth four. A subconscious habit we've developed before birth, which then turns into a habit. Touching our face can spread COVID-19. An infected person can then spread the virus by touching other surfaces such as ATMs and door handles. If it can help one person, it'll make a difference. Anyone can access the program called Stop Touching Your Face for free. It's available on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram or through an app. Leonie Ryan, 7 News. Sam Jolly's been taking notes. She's got her hands by her side and she's got the weather next. I do. Thank you, Rick. We had a dreary day and it was a couple of degrees cooler than the April average. I'll tell you when the sunshine will return after the break. It's amazing. Sunday. The whole house reveal. You hit the bloody jackpot. Congratulations, mate. It'll make history. Oh, wow. As the best transformation ever. Oh. The must-see whole house reveal. Sunday at 7 on 7. If you're in business in Australia, right now you're facing one of your toughest challenges. It's not business as usual, and it's hard to know where to turn. Business Australia can help you manage your responsibilities to your employees, look after their health and well-being, and assist with strategies to maintain and sustain your business. We've been helping Australian businesses through thick and thin for 194 years, and we're here for you now. For free advice and support, visit businessaustralia.com. JB's got the hottest deals on home entertainment, like their 65-inch 4K TV for $5.98. Get 15% off TCL TVs. This hours of fun with this Nintendo Switch Lite for $3.29. Buy in store, online click and collect or get it delivered. JB, you've done it again. Entertain your family and make over your backyard with an Aquatechnics pool. Visit our website for our award-winning range including plunge pools, sleek lap designs and the amazing 11-metre model. Get an online quote or visit our display centres today. Feed the family with Hungry Jack's new family bundle. Treat yourself with two Whoppers, two cheeseburgers, four small chips, four Cokes, ten nuggets and sauce, only $24.95. Get takeaway, drive through or delivery at Hungry Jack's. When I started out, I could hardly even swim. I had to stay below deck, I was so seasick. Life doesn't always turn out as we imagine. Australia, you have our support. Find out more at nab.com.au. Nab, more than money. Reason. From the moment we're born, we're conditioned to find it. Why does it feel good to dance? Why are we drawn to the water? We're consumed by a need for explanation. But some things just defy rational sense. When you move beyond what's known and into what's felt, you don't need a reason. Can care be better at home? Someone from Medibank mentioned that there's a chance I can do rehab at home. I said, oh, how much extra is that going to cost? And they said, no, you've got it in your hospital cover. It just was fantastic for me. 
at Spotlight Fall into Winter with 40% off all Flannelette Bedlin and 40% off Koo Quilt cover sets. VIP save $200 on Simcoe Indigo Overlocker so you can cuddle it, dream it and sew it for less. Sail on now. At Spotlight, it's what you make it. Uh, Dad, we might need to pick up some more bread. Dad? I'll pick some up. Thanks. Now, more than ever, we know what families are going through, so you can pick up lots of specials every week. Like chicken schnitzel from the deli, now $1 each. That's better than half price. Find them all in our online catalogue. We want you to always get your Woolies worth. That's why I pick Woolies. A long time ago, I made a mistake. Nine months later, you come Wait, along? Hang on. Who's her dad? Home and Away, this week on Seven. More Dancing Together videos are popping up on social media, including this one from the kids at Good Start Early Learning in Baldivas. Don't forget to tag Telethon 7 and 7 News Perth in your posts. Hashtag Dancing Together and watch 7 News each night. Raz Laver and his family are tonight's finalist, but there's still plenty of time to get your own entry in. The competition closes on May 10th. Good luck. That was a good one. Sam's back now with your forecast and a taste of winter today, Sam. Just a taste, Sue. It was cool and cloudy and the showers started this afternoon. We've had 0.2 of a millimetre in the city. Our top was 24.6 degrees. We got down to 13.8. Right now it's 20 degrees and the westerlies are light. Mandra had some earlier showers from around 11am and they've had one millimetre all up. 0.2 of a millimetre for Kalamunda and Fremantle. And it was cool and cloudy right across the metro area. 21 degrees in Kalamunda and 22 for Rockingham and for Baldivis. Around WA today, a few spots including Port Hedland hit 42 degrees and there were showers in our southwest and Eucla. We can thank a weak cold front that brushed our south for today's conditions. A ridge of high pressure is becoming established over the central west coast. Interstate sunny and 24 degrees for Sydney tomorrow. A warm 28 in Brisbane and showers are developing in Adelaide 22. Around WA tomorrow, hot and sunny in the north of the state, while we could see light showers again for much of our south. On local waters, southwesterly winds about 10 knots, tending south to southwesterly tomorrow evening. So looking at your suburb tomorrow, we do have a 40% chance of rain. It is most likely in the morning. 25 degrees are top for Ellenbrook, 23 for Cottesloe and Fremantle and 24 in Mandra. We could get evening showers on Friday, a slight chance, a partly cloudy 23. Then for the weekend, a high chance of showers on Saturday, but clearing by the late afternoon, 22 the top, then partly cloudy and 23 on Sunday. Day, and it's looking just the same for Monday. And congratulations to Joan and Rex Knight on their 70th wedding anniversary from all their family, friends and staff at Margaret Hubery House. And now for tonight's winning auto numbers. They are 11, 4, 24, 19, 43, 15 and the supplementaries are 12 and 8. Rick and Sue. Thanks, Sam. That's 7 News for now. We'll be back with updates throughout the evening. Join Michael Usher for the latest at 10.30 and enjoy the rest of your night here on 7.